Karen Miller here from Asleep At Last. Welcome to another one of my videos. Please remember to subscribe to my channel to be notified of when I upload new videos. So today I'm talking about how to stop holding to sleep. Now, holding is something that often people get themselves into when, for example, they've tried, perhaps they've tried to put their baby down and the baby has just gone crazy. So they've picked the baby up to reassure the baby, to comfort the baby, but then what's ended up happening is before you know it, the baby's actually gone to sleep in your arms. The problem with this is that once you pop baby down, to, once they're, uh, they've fallen asleep, um, quite soon after that, they will suddenly wake up. And sometimes instantly, as soon as you put them down, depending how long you've left it, they will wake up and start screaming. Um, and then the whole cycle repeats itself because you're then picking up again, um, doing it again, holding them until they're asleep because you're like, well, this is what you want. You want me to hold you. But then when I put you down, I can't hold you the entire night. Um, and the cycle just continues. So what's happening here is that um, the baby is, you know, waking up confused because you uh, when you're holding the baby, the, you know, it feels warm. It feels cozy. They can probably hear your heartbeat. They can smell you when you put them down. Often they're not in a deep sleep. It takes 20 minutes for a baby to get into a deep sleep, but quite quickly they come out of that deep sleep and go into a lighter phase of sleep um, again anyway. Um, so often they're not in the deepest of sleeps and so they they can sense that they have been put down um, and that then startles them awake and then they're screaming again because they're like, well, hang on a minute, I fell asleep in your arms. I don't know how to fall asleep down here where am I, what's going on, just pick me up again. Um, so yeah, the best thing, the best way to stop holding your child to sleep is to just stop, which sounds so simple, I know, and it, I know it isn't that simple. Um, there are a few things you can do. So I always say to my clients, bear in mind, your job is to help your child calm down, not get them to sleep. So if your baby is screaming blue murder when you pop them down. Um, of course, pick them up and comfort them, but keep an eye on them that they're not falling asleep in your arms. Um, the whole old wives tale of putting them down drowsy um, but awake is relevant, but it, it doesn't entirely work. And it's, it's quite hard as well to know if your child is drowsy or if they're actually in a sleep, especially if they're a really little baby, if they're really young. So um, that is tricky, but what I would say is as soon as they're calm in your arms, pop them down. Um, and then you might end up picking them up again and putting them down again and picking them up again and putting them multiple, multiple times until they're eventually not as, you know, screaming quite as much when you put them down. And by all means, stay with them, comfort them whilst they're down. You know, this is a, this is a baby or a child that's been used to physical contact. You, so they're not gonna suddenly just fall asleep in, in this sort of like big cold cot uh, that they're not used to with arms flailing all around it, them, themselves because they've got loads of space. So you will need to do a lot of comforting, a lot of reassurance whilst they're down in their cot or their crib. So by all means, you know, stay with them. Um, if you look at the hierarchy of soothing, um, which is something that I learned in my training, you know, the, the kind of like strongest association is kind of feeding to sleep and then you've got kind of holding to sleep um, and then you've got kind of rocking and patting to sleep and um, then you've got just kind of touch, then you've got voice and then you've kind of like got nothing and they learn to go to sleep independently. So you can kind of think of it as a like a scale. So the next step you're going from holding to sleep is just uh, re reassuring and um, using a lot of touch whilst they are in the bed um, and remembering that even though they may be screaming their heads off that you they're just protesting the change they're tired they want to go to sleep they want you to do the thing that you were doing last time which is holding them to sleep to go back to sleep now this doesn't work with all babies some babies you know don't like um hate to be touched when they're down they're okay to be cuddled but then once you put them down they're like actually your touching is annoying me it also depends on the age of your child as well little babies respond much better to this than older ones for older ones they will protest a lot more because they're more aware of you know why are you now sitting there and not doing the thing that you would that you normally do like i want to come out of this cot um so bear in mind your child's age and 
set your expectations that it, it may take some time but as long as you're consistent and you don't end up going back to the thing that you were doing so say for a few nights you've had some success with them just patting in the, in the cot but then um, on night three or four they just scream blue murder and you can't take it any longer and so you just hold them you're kind of going back to square one and what you're teaching them there is that eventually if I cry long enough you will just give me what I want so you do have to kind of persevere and follow it through and see it through to the end which could be as long as two to three weeks of this before you actually see them falling asleep without needing you at all um, of course if you're happy to offer assistance um, whilst they're in their beds and you just want to move away from holding perhaps this is something you're, you're trying to do for just naps a lot of people don't want to do contact naps anymore um because it means that you can't get anything done or you've got another child um then that's different because obviously you don't need to then keep weaning yourself away from them if you're happy to go to them once they wake up from one sleep cycle and assist them again that's fine um you can still remove the holding by doing it this way um that will work and they, you can also just do it for naps and do different things at night time if you've got a young baby a bit more difficult to do that if you've got an older baby from about sort of eight nine months plus um but yeah holding to sleep is a difficult one to remove but absolutely possible to do so and it is not a sustainable way of getting your child to sleep either because as they grow they're going to get heavier it's going to be really hard on your back um and what usually ends up happening with parents who don't kind of nip this in the bud is they tend to end up just putting their baby into their bed and co-sleeping just because that's easier than physically having to hold them and wait for them to fall asleep. Um, which again is not ideal if you're wanting to teach your child to sleep independently. I hope you found that video useful guys. Please hit like if you did and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.